I had one of those moments I think that a lot of actors have in their careers where you just know it's like the right fit. I just saw it and was like, I want to bring him to life. I want to play that. That has to be my part. The tick is similar in the in the fabulous drag, uh, you know, kind of gets his joy out of performing aspect. But the other side to his personality is he's his tortured father and uh, he's been absent from his son's life. And so it's got this great divergence of personality is a really interesting and fun thing to play as an actor. I actually knew the woman who this character is based on, Carlotta. She was a big, big star in the 60s in a drag club called Les Girls. It was very easy for me to slip into her skin. And uh, once I was confident that the audience was going to buy me as a woman, um, and I did the first workshop with a full beard in a pair of shorts and a pair of flip-flops, and the audience was going, yes, we, we believe who this woman is. And I thought, right, okay, now I'm going to really go after this role. I mean, that's the thing that I learned when I was doing Lacage to actually take on that physical transformation. I would sit down in my dressing room and then, you know, at places for the show, I'd feel like somebody completely different. So I'm really happy that sequentially, like, I got to experience that show first before entering this world because although the shows are very different, at least I understood what it feels like to be in drag and what that does to somebody. I did a little homework before we started and uh, I, I talked to a friend of mine into going out in drag with me when I was in London over doing hair. And we got up in these fantastic get-ups and we went out, the heads turned and everybody was just like, oh, they're, you know, and they're, and, and to an extent you think, oh, they're just pointing at the freaks, but they want to talk to you and they want, they want to take pictures with you. And I could see how it could become totally like addictive and, and empowering to be a drag performer. Sometimes you put makeup on and it doesn't do anything, but um, I, it actually makes me look like a rather attractive lady. And so it gave me a confidence with the wig and the, the outfits, which were especially created for me by our designers. And I look into the mirror and I go, yeah, I believe this woman was once a drop dead you know, showstopper. I bring a lot of myself to him, but I think there's a lot of me that I would be too afraid to express that he does all the time. I think fundamentally about him is that he is insecure underneath it all, so there's a lot of like parallels that I can draw. Um, and then the fact that he is a performer too, although I'm not a drag performer, but there's that sense of, of freedom that he gets and uh, liberation, so that's kind of what he embodies when he takes on Felicia. I tried to push as far as I could in the fabulous direction and when it became a little too much or too camp then you, you know you, you figure out where that level is and, and in the same regard with the, the more sincere scenes and the, the more uh, grounded stuff and hopefully if that spectrum is wide enough then that's the biggest payoff. To know that the producers and the director of the show have the confidence to keep me on this journey around the world uh, it, it does a lot for one's self esteem that you can just relax and play the show and go, you know, they, they believe in me.